Hi everybody, welcome back to Sin City Living. It's Jason here bringing you today's video. Don't forget to uh, go, don't forget to join our Discord, guys. We're tr definitely trying to build up a uh, little community there, and uh, you can give me suggestions for videos, strategies, or just chat amongst yourselves about it. So, for today, I want to talk about. I want to do uh, a, uh, a small, quick, brief little analysis on one of the the variants that I've seen popping up a lot lately. Um, I'd like to say I see this winning a lot, but I don't know that I ever really see it win. So I definitely wanted to talk about it. So everybody knows the Iron Cross, of course. Now, if you're on a $10 table, then a proper Iron Cross would be three units each on the five, six, and eight, and two units on the field or that $10 minimum, because you need to have your place bets be higher than your field bet by at least one unit, because otherwise you're not pulling a profit. I see people that do the two units each, which means they make $4 in one of these hits. They lose 10 there, they make 14 here. It doesn't make sense. This way, when you do it three units and two units, you're at least making two units every single hit. Um, still, as we've discussed in other, other videos analyzing the Iron Cross, it's still a poor strategy unless you are using it to expand out. If you're pressing your, your uh, Iron Cross place bets, expanding out to the other numbers and then pressing, then you have a shot at, at winning. But otherwise, if you're just same betting, same betting, same betting, as we've discussed in the past, you know that a seven out is coming at some point. Every roll ends with a seven. There's, there's no getting around that. So whatever you have on the table or whatever your initial buy-in is, is going to be a loss. So when you're looking at 61 in action and you're averaging 10 and a half bucks a win, that means you need six hits, six rolls of the dice, six non-seven rolls of the dice just to break even. So you, the Iron Cross needs to break the statistics just to break even. The majority of the time, you're going to lose. You're not going to lose all $61. If you have one hit first, then you lose $51. If there's two hits first, then you lose $41. It's pretty, pretty obvious progression there. Now, if you are in the pressing mode, then even, even the sixth or seventh hit, you're probably not going to be in the positive because you've been reinvesting some of your money. But by the eighth, ninth, tenth hit, you're in, not only are you in the positive, you can be significantly in the positive. And if you happen to catch one of those 15, 20 minute rolls, if you are expanding it out, as we've talked about in the past, that's how you will make money. That's how you can set a win condition and actually win money and leave ahead. One thing that I have noticed lately is a lot of people doing the variant that, uh, um, no offense to anybody that plays this, that I call the Iron Stupid. A lot of us call the Iron Stupid, actually. Um, where they're running low on money, and first off, they almost always do the, in fact, they always do the same number of units on the place bets as they do in the field. So right there, they're already cutting out a huge portion of their, their ability to win. And then they hop whatever number they are missing, such as, say, the two late fives. They'll hop it for two bucks. The theory this person has is that instead of having $10 out there, they only have $2 out there. The problem with that is that you have $10 out here that stays out there. You have $2 out here that comes down every single roll. So now let's look at the 6 and 8. So the 6 and 8, if either one of these hit, since you're only at the same number of units, the table minimum, you already have cut hugely into your profit. Instead of making $10 per, uh, or $11 per hit, you make $4 per hit. But now you only make $2 because you have to bring back your hopper. $2 per hit on 10 of the 36 combinations of the dice. And if you take out the losing numbers, 10 of the 30 combinations of the dice, one third of the rolls, you're, you're gonna make two bucks. That's, that's fantastic. So let's look it over at the hopper. Well, should that hopper hit, that's gonna make 14 bucks, you lose 10, you made four bucks. Now, we can add in another four hits of the dice right here, four combinations. You're looking at 14 combinations of the dice out of 30 non-losing combinations. So almost half of the rolls that don't lose, you will win two or four dollars. Two or four bucks. Makes zero sense to be playing it, to be playing this way. Even worse is when I see people that are doing the whole 
darn thing. Now here's the thing. You need eight dollars to do this hop. Because you have to, you're hopping the three-way eights, you're hopping the three-way sixes, and you're hopping the two-way fives. Okay? Three-way six, three-way eight, two-way fives. Anything that hits, let's say a five rolls. Okay? For five rolls, you get paid eight dollars. Guess what? You lost ten dollars over here. So you lost two dollars. Any of these, except for the hard ways. Should a hard way hit, you've got eight dollars in action, so you're gonna make twenty-three bucks. You make twenty-three dollars, you lose ten, so you make thirteen dollars. A hard six, a hard eight wins. So two of the thirty non-losing combinations of the dice, you're going to make twenty-three dollars. Twelve of the thirty non-losing combinations of the dice, you're going to lose two dollars. And of the remaining in the field, you're going to win two dollars. It doesn't make sense. There's, there's absolutely no scenario where this strategy is going to win money. It's, it just it makes absolutely zero sense. I see this played out by people that have absolutely zero understanding of the game and absolutely zero understanding of basic math. Now, another variant that I have seen lately is all day hard six, hard eight, and then hopping the easy sixes, easy eights. Well, now at this point, you're a push on a five because you're going to win $10 you lose $10 over there. On a six or an eight, easy six, easy eight, you're actually going to lose a dollar because you need a dollar to come back on your hard way. Plus, you lost $10 over there. So you lost $11. You're getting paid 10 bucks. So once again, it makes no sense. The Iron Cross, in and of itself, is not a terrible strategy. I know we always say that it's, that it's one of the weaker strategies. But honestly, all the strategies are relatively weak in some way, shape, or form. Depending on how you play it, if you are expanding it out, if you are pressing it, if you're using it to either expand out the numbers or press the the numbers that you are, are betting. And even if you don't expand out, you can press your five, six, eight, and then press your field. So you can still press your entire iron cross without expanding out. If you're doing that, then you have just as much of an opportunity to win as somebody that's doing a mid-press method, a power press method, a press unit you know, method. Um, you're at least trying to win money. This strategy is not trying to win money. And this strategy never wins money. Ever, 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 ever. I watch I don't know how many thousands of rolls every single week the strategy is this variant it just does not make sense so I hope you guys find this interesting illuminating enlightening or at the very least just play fun we will catch you guys next time bye now thank you everybody for watching today's video and as promised a little bit more detail on things that we are working on so Again, we want, to, uh, we want to continue trying to expand the channel. We're really hoping to be, add, to be able to add roulette as soon as possible. And then some video kino, video slots, stuff along those lines. Um, unfortunately, it ate up almost all of our cash, um, paying off all of our bills during the month of January, January while we were down. And uh, now that the holidays have ended, um, YouTube's uh, payouts have dropped significantly. So. Uh, we're kind of treading water here uh, as far as all that goes. Do have a lot of things we want to add, though. Not just those, those things, those, those additional games, and hopefully some carnival games and such, such like that, but the live streams. The biggest problem right now with the live streams is with three jobs combined between the two of us, four if I include the, the 20 to 30 hours a week I'm putting into the YouTube channel. Um, it's very, very difficult for me to have a day and time that I can commit to doing the live stream every single week because we also have our, our very young child to, to take care of. But I'm trying to figure that out. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to end up being on, on Monday nights or Tuesday afternoons or possibly both. I intend to do at least one live stream exclusively for our patrons and then another one on the YouTube channel. So possibly both, both days. Um, we also have a few other things that, that we really want to attempt to move forward on. I'm just running into to either time or skill set issues. I do want to eventually have a, a website going for us. Um, I did used to program websites a long, over a decade ago. A lot of things have changed and I just don't have that time. Um, and uh, 
Uh, not a whole lot of knowledge on the current state of of um, building websites, hosting site. You know what what sites can host and and. Uh, uh, how to build up, you know, the e-commerce stuff. So, if anybody has any skill sets along those lines and would like to answer some questions uh, or just help us out, shoot us an email, sincitylivinglv at gmail.com. Um, also, I really hope to be able to start adding some some uh, fairly ex some exclusive stuff from Sin City Living, uh, logoed shirts, hats. I'm looking to get uh, custom dice made, even custom custom layouts made. Although those would be pretty expensive, um, but. I know zero about e-commerce and drop shipping and uh, anything along those lines. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, please email me. Uh, I would I would love to ask you some questions and uh, see if uh, see if you can answer answer a few to help me figure out how to get that going. Um, same thing with uh, with designing our logos. You know, I, I I had the logo had some logos designed, very very small logos, unfortunately, not big enough to blow up to put on T-shirts and stuff like that. And again, I know next to nothing. Not next to I know nothing about um, logo design, graphic design, any kind of websites that could that could do it. Um, I I literally know nothing. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, also please email me, and you're willing to ask, answer some questions, please. Email me and uh, and let me know. I uh, uh, I'll admit I don't even know where to start as far as asking some questions, but I'm sure I'll, I'll ask a few and that'll trigger a few more, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, there's that, and and uh, of course we do hope to continue to improve our AV setup. But I am an AV moron, so also right there, if you have any skill sets or knowledge in that area please email me and, and are willing to answer some questions, please email me and, uh, and let me know. We would love the help. Uh, otherwise, again, thank you everybody for watching and we're very excited to continue bringing you our videos. Bye now.